welcome welcome back here to the show my name is zach and this is zach talks hawks this is the place where you come to hear about seahawk football and we are on the precipice now of week two which means it is time for the seahawk week two preview against the new england patriots and we get back to predictions for the next week now uh this this didn't start out the best in terms of week one but i think week one's always the hardest to predict every year we did squeak by with a winning record so we'll get to that towards the end of the show but today i want to talk to you about seattle's week two matchup coming off of their dr jekyll and mr hyde performance of this this week one matchup versus denver they, they're going to turn the page and take a look at going cross country, playing the New England Patriots against a team led by Jacoby Brissett that defeated the Cincinnati Bengals on the road in week one. So I think there's a lot to be had here with this matchup. No longer is Seattle going to get away with being their own worst enemy for a whole half and hoping that they're going to get out on the other side of this thing unscathed. Although, I do think this is a very winnable game for Seattle if they play like the team that they played like in the second half of their matchup against Denver. You're going to have a matchup here that is going to pit two very good quality defenses against one another. Here we have uh, the Gerard Mayo era starting in New England, but yet New England is going to still continue to be a team whose defense is going to be their staple. That, that's going to be the thing they hang their hat on, and they're going to hope and pray that their offense comes with some identity that Jacoby Brissett is able to foster some significant plays all throughout the game and keep the offense within striking distance, hopefully to snatch a victory away from the jaws of defeat right at the end of this thing. And to a lesser extent, uh, Seattle, for years, it just has felt like that they're sort of geared the same way, where we hang our hat on the defense, we hope we stay in it for as long as we can, and then eke out a win right at the very end. And for the first half of the matchup against Denver, it sort of felt like more the same. The defense was electric. It was flying to the ball. I talked about in our show last time I was on the channel about how Seattle really look strong defensively and schematically they're using the right players in the right positions they're they're putting them in the best places that they can be the best version of themselves and that's always what you want to see out of a sound defensive squad but i i do think the talent level on these two teams are very different from one another i think seattle's defense is better than New England's defense. And I also think that Seattle's run game, Seattle's identity is more solidified than New England. Last week we talked about how New England in their matchup, I said I would be very surprised if New England came with any sort of identity at all offensively throughout the whole season. They're going to have a lot of difficulty trying to find themselves. And Jacoby Brissett played an okay game, but what was able for him to do what, what, what happened for him I guess I should say was that they had just enough of a running game in order for Jacoby to then make plays survive he, the offensive line for New England is not very good and yet they came out versus a what is a historically slow starting Cincinnati club and opened up just enough opportunities for Brissett and company through the running game so that New England can, can score barely enough points to walk away with a surprising week one W. And look, do I think Seattle is the team that we saw in the first half of the game versus Denver or in the second half? I really think Mike McDonald did a great job at his halftime coaching adjustments to get this squad to where they want to be all throughout the season in the second half of their game. Focus on the run, open up the passing lanes for Geno, take that pressure off of what is a dilapidated already 
We're already through one week of football, and we're talking about how bad this offensive line is, but the offensive line is bad. And take some pressure off of Geno. Run the ball well. Try to try to foster some of that running game. Stack the box and then hit him deep. Geno did a good job of that last week, and I think he's going to do a better job of that this week. Where historically Seattle always travels east very, very well. They're a really good travel team. Now, again, that was under Pete Carroll. That the the whole process of packing up and going from one side of the country to another side of the country is uh could could be different we don't know (laughs) from from the carroll era to the mike mcdonald era so historically speaking seattle travels well they're more talented on both sides of the football and i do think that seattle will walk away from new england with an east coast win this week against a team that look performed well in week one but not a whole lot of us have a high expectation have a high bar for the new england patriots led under jacoby Brissett and company the defense is going to keep them in games for a little while how i think this game's going to pan out it's going to be pretty close uh through three quarters and seattle's just going to pull away in in the fourth quarter i i don't see the roller coaster like we did in week one versus denver but i do see seattle sort of banging their head against the wall over and over and over and over again and ultimately that's going to prevail sort of like what the detroit lions did this past week uh, to the los angeles rams where they they especially late in the game were very stingy on the run and then in overtime said we're just going to run it down your throat and we're going to dare you to stop us. I think Seattle's in a great place to face this game that way. I'd expect a huge, huge game from K-9, from, from Kenneth Walker, and ultimately Seattle's going to win this one. I feel like it's going to be more like a, a 27 to 17 kind of game where it does stay close for a while, but the end result that the 10-point win doesn't necessarily show how different these two teams are, and I really have a lot of confidence this week that Seattle's going to pull out the win here in New England. Hope you guys prove me right and we're able to celebrate another Seattle win. Starting 2-0 for the squad would be huge, huge considering considering all the injuries that the powerhouses in this division in L.A. and San Francisco are having very early on that could affect their long-term season outlook. This is a big opportunity for Seattle to get up 2-0 and, and, and continue moving forward in their pursuit of a division title. I don't think it's going to happen with this team, but the chance is here with an easy matchup on paper against the New England Patriots. Looking towards our Week 2 predictions off of our Week 1 slate, we went 9-7. and seven. Yes, 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 we did it. I started out losing four of the first seven games <laughs> on uh, all throughout week one and i thought man i am gonna look really bullish <laughs> starting nfl predictions but we finished strong finished nine and seven on the week i'm zero for one on my upset picks i picked last week the jets to beat the 49ers man i was wrong about that matchup it they didn't miss a beat without christian mccaffrey and i thought that was the linchpin that held that team together which makes san francisco even more dangerous looking forward into the season as a seahawk fan they were able to fend off the jets and and handle them really really well so whiffed on my first pick but for my upset but we're right back to the drawing board here in week two starting with tonight tonight thursday night football buffalo travels to miami to play the miami dolphins where tua tagovailoa is one for seven in his matchups uh with buffalo it it ain't good he he, he's he's got a one in six record against uh the buffalo bills and i think historically there are just some teams in the nfl that have your number i think buffalo coming off of their very slow start in terms of quarterback play last week and then ending really really strong josh allen had two touchdowns through the air two rushing touchdowns in his week one matchup i think they're just going to carry this momentum this is 
been talked about all season about how Buffalo looks weak and this is their year where they're not going to be as formidable and I, I think they're going to put those talks to rest at least for now with a pretty decisive win over the Miami Dolphins tonight on Thursday Night Football. Taking a look here as we progress through the NFL schedule, Las Vegas. Oh, you let me down, Vegas. 0-1 <laughs> uh, going against the Baltimore Ravens, who also let me down last week by a toe. I almost, almost got that prediction right. But unfortunately, Baltimore falls to Kansas City. And these two teams are looking for a bounce back week two matchup here in Baltimore. Listen, I, I thought the Raiders were going to come out a bit stronger than what they did in week one. And now I'm of the mind where you got to you gotta show me in order for me to believe in you again. I love Gardner Minshew. I love how they built up the defense in Las Vegas. It's just a matter of coaching. Why in the world are you punting the ball in enemy territory with six minutes left in the game down by six points? That makes no sense to me. Coaching matters in the NFL. And I think Baltimore has the major edge on coaching here in this game. I can see this game be close for a little bit. And then ultimately, Baltimore, with their superior talent, pulls away. They're trying to still figure out how to use their crazy running back depth on that squad well. Watch out for them using Derrick Henry more this week than they did last week. Baltimore gets the win here in week two. Then we have the L.A. Chargers traveling to the dumpster fire of Carolina. Yes, the Carolina Panthers uh, will look to take the mantle as the worst team in the NFL this week without a shadow of it out playing the new Harbaugh charger team which surprisingly even with justin herbert is now a running team yes they ran the ball over 30 times last week and i think that trend really continues why jeopardize your quarterback when you can just make him into a game manager especially against an inferior opponent where you're going to be able to run the ball all day long <laughs> they did it last week. I see them doing it this week. Huge game on the ground from the Chargers, and they take this matchup as the Panthers go 0-2 in what is quickly becoming a desperate attempt to not have a zero in the win column. It's, it's looking bad for the fans in Carolina right now. New Orleans travels to Dallas this week. New Orleans having the most surprising win in week one in terms of playing ability, not necessarily against you know, who they played against, but Derek Carr balled out last week, and he's going to try to take that momentum over to Dallas, who they themselves, with their uh, richest man on the planet, <laughs> Dak Prescott, uh, they had a ball last week against Cleveland on the road. Now we're in Jerry world, and the Cowboys rarely lose at home. They're a very good home team. I don't think what we saw in the Saints is going to be the Saints for the whole season. You're going to have to prove that to me as the season goes along. Dallas, traditionally a great home team. They're going to find out their swag a little bit more offensively uh, against a Saints team who... Let's, let's be fair, the strength last week for them was their, their offense and the play of Derek Carr. We're not necessarily talking about how great the Saints' defense is. I just think the talent on the offensive side of the ball for Dallas is going to be way, way too much for them to handle. And we're going to watch Dallas walk out of here week two with the W. I'm picking Dallas in their matchup against New Orleans. Tampa Bay and the Bake Show. Yes, the best quarterback in week one we talked about how Derek Carr was great Baker Mayfield outdid him with a crazy crazy game in week one playing against the Detroit Lions who as I mentioned earlier had their win in overtime uh, on Monday night and what was a, a great game against the Rams although I didn't pick Detroit to win their game last week I'm also not picking Detroit to win their game this week. Call me a fool. I'm going to get burnt by them twice. But I, I do feel like Baker Mayfield and company are going to be a, a really formidable team this year, especially if this offense chugs along. There's, there's very little questions about Tampa Bay and their defense. Their secondary can be a little shaky, but their pass rush up front is so good. And last week we saw... 
in their matchup with the Rams, if if you have uh, a, a game where you're in it versus Detroit, the Rams showed that you can claw your way back in there fairly quickly. It, late in the game, it became a game, and it, it turned into a, a battle. I think Baker's got that in him this year. We're gonna have, we're gonna see again the Big Show go on the road to Detroit and win. Yes, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beating the Detroit Lions. A interesting matchup is happening in Green Bay this week as Indianapolis takes on the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau. Listen, <laughs> I said last week Anthony Richardson. I'm I'm expecting some things, some big things from him. He's got a lot of talent. I hope he slides more. I hope he stays healthy because that kid is oozing with talent. His highs are so high and his lows are so low. He can be very inaccurate, but man, when he connects, we saw the arm talent on full display last week as he was just slinging the rock around the yard for Indy. They didn't win, but the offensive blueprint for Indianapolis is there playing against a Green Bay squad who, as we reflect on them not just last week but also historically has struggled defensively and I think Anthony Richardson is going to take advantage of a Green Bay secondary that I just simply don't think they're up for the task even at home you're gonna see Anthony Richardson put up gaudy numbers against the Green Bay Packer defense I'm picking Indy going on the road and defeating Green Bay then moving forward into some of the slates later on on Sunday, we see Cleveland Browns going to Jacksonville to play the Jaguars. Oh, what can we say about Cleveland that hasn't already been said by all the pundits? It is getting bad in Cleveland, especially with the Deshaun Watson new allegations that are coming out. Maybe that's a good thing for the fan base. Maybe they can get out of his contract early. But Deshaun Watson is not going to be the quarterback that we've seen in Houston. He just, he's, he's shot. You can see how he looks on the field. It's its not a good, good showing from him last week. It won't be a good showing from him this week playing the Jacksonville Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor's going to start laying some good good foundational bricks here for him to have a, a good season this, season, this year. And we're going to see Jacksonville take the win at home against a, a, a Cleveland team who many thought was going to contend for the AFC North. I'm just not seeing it anymore. Even after week one, I'm just not seeing it anymore. Jacksonville with the win. San Francisco travels to what is a surprising for many, not for me because I picked them, Minnesota Vikings team with Sam Darnold. Yes, Sam Darnold wins as he plays uh, the New York Giants. It's really cool to see Sam Darnold sort of bounce back and come into his own, but is it just a one-week thing or is it the, the whole season thing, right? Is what we're seeing from Sam Darnold what we're finally going to see from him all throughout the year or was it just he played a really bad team and so he had a really good game well uh, look I'm, I'm not picking against San Francisco San Francisco is a really really good team and last week I picked against them because I thought their injuries and I thought their holdouts and I thought their drama in the offseason would affect them that just wasn't the case that wasn't the case at all in fact even with the backup running back they got like Christian McCaffrey Jr. back there running all over guys. I think San Francisco wins this one big in Minnesota this week. You're going to see San Francisco flex their muscles and say, we, we are the favorites from the NFC to go to the Super Bowl. San Francisco takes this one big time in Minnesota this week. Uh, we already talked about Seattle and New England. I'm, of course, picking Seattle. New York Jets going on the road, playing the Tennessee Titans. Oh, man. I talked last week about Will Levis, and I talked about how, as a Penn State fan, I saw him up close. I know what he is, and now the world knows what he is. He's He can be a suave guy that wants to sell mayonnaise, perfume, all that he wants, and try to meme it up and take advantage of his 10 seconds of fame. 
It's not going to happen. <laughs> he, his days are numbered in Tennessee. I, I simply don't see uh, the Tennessee Titans moving forward with Will Levis past this season because what I saw in his performance last week where his head coach came out and said it'd be better for us to just punt on first down because Tennessee's defense won them the game. Uh, that's what I saw. That, that's what I see out of Will Levis. If he's not hurt, he's doing that kind of stuff. His highs are okay, but his lows are just back-breakingly low. Uh, this, for me, is a no-brainer. I think Aaron Rodgers and company, they're going to start gelling on offense. Didn't have a great week one performance. I picked them in the upset last week. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to bounce back. This is the perfect team, the perfect team for the Jets to bounce back against Jets taking on the road in Tennessee. The Giants, the other team that plays in MetLife, is also on the road this week going to play Mr. Daniels and the Washington Commanders on the road. Oh, man, all the videos of the fans heckling Daniel Jones after the game, that's heartbreaking. I, I don't think that there's any place in, in, in the sport where it's acceptable to wait after a game and, and boo and persecute a guy personally if you're sitting in the stands and you bought a seat sure boo all you want after the game go home uh this is daniel jones's bounce back opportunity against a team that i think the giants can beat on the road i i don't know how and i think i'm only picking them because i feel sorry for daniel jones i really really hope that he has a decent week and the heat can get off of him for one week after an atrocious week one showing i'm gonna pick the giants i don't know why but i'm gonna pick them to beat the washington commanders this is my upset of the week the los angeles rams going on the road to arizona yes it is going to be an upset because these two teams are even by record but they are not even on paper on paper this would suggest that the rams win this game uh, but I do feel like the injury to Puka Nakua and, and different offensive line injuries is going to hinder the LA Rams for quite a little while. Nakua is out at least until week five, and we're going to see a LA Rams team that's going to be fighting with one hand behind their back versus an Arizona team who's looked pretty solid they, they were an upstart team last week playing it against buffalo in buffalo and taking it to the bills for quite a long while in that game i think with the home crowd on their side this is my upset of the week arizona gonna take it against their division rival the los angeles rams they're gonna go down <laughs> and the nfc west is gonna be flipped upside down with a whole bunch of expectations just being shattered blown out of the water as arizona claims this win then we have the russell wilson revenge tour that we were promised but probably isn't gonna happen pittsburgh traveling to denver to take on the denver broncos russell wilson standing in pads last week in atlanta when he's inactive is probably the most Russell Wilson thing I have ever seen in my life. Uh, look, I'm very thankful for what Russell Wilson has done as a Seattle Seahawks fan. He brought us our only Super Bowl, gave us an opportunity to win two, and yet, man, this guy's just so corny. He's so beyond himself, and uh, now we have a quarterback conversation in Pittsburgh. If Justin Fields can just do the bare minimum, and as Ben Roethlisberger commented on his podcast this week, do the things that make sure Pittsburgh doesn't lose the game, why shouldn't he be the number one quarterback in Pittsburgh? I'm starting to ask that question myself. Uh, Justin Fields and the Steelers, it looks like that's going to be the duo for this week, going to Denver to play Bo Nix and company. Look, I just don't think Denver is, is very talented. I think they are well coached, but I don't think they're as well coached as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Tomlin needs to win these slates of games to get ready for the gauntlet at the end of the season for Pittsburgh. They got to they gotta have this. So I'm picking Pittsburgh to take the win versus Denver. Cincinnati going on the road in what can be a powerhouse matchup versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Burrow versus Mahomes. Burrow has shown historically he's the only guy that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes and beat him. And yet... 
my confidence in the Cincinnati team is shaken. We talked about how they looked slow against New England last week. They struggled against a team that they were supposed to beat soundly. And here we are, a tough road matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm not picking against the Chiefs until they can show me a reason why I need to doubt them. I'm picking Kansas City on the road against a Cincinnati team that we really got to wait till like week five, week six in order to see what they really are because they just refuse to start any NFL season like they should. Kansas City takes this W at home. Chicago and Caleb Williams, who did not play well, but Chicago's defense did, uh, going on the road and playing against the Houston Texans. Listen, (laughs) <laughs> Bears fans, come a little closer. You're not winning. <laughs> uh, your defense might be good, but it's not good enough to stop CJ Stroud. That dude is amazing. The offensive weapons that Stroud has are just too too much for that defense to overcome for 60 minutes of the game. It might be close for a little while. Caleb Williams might get away with floundering. His welcome to the NFL moment happened last week. I think that's going to continue this week. And Houston's going to win this one pretty decisively against the Chicago Bears. It's it's going to be some growing pains in Chicago. It's not going to be as easy as you think. And Houston, they're on a roll right now. And I'd be really surprised if the Bears pull this one out. That's why I'm not picking them. Atlanta on the road with what is possibly a banged-up Kirk Cousins. He didn't look very good. He didn't look very mobile. But he's old. And he's coming off a torn Achilles. So let's give him some grace. They're on the road playing against the Philadelphia Eagles. I think Philly's going to win this game simply because the running game's too good. We looked at Saquon Barkley and what he did last week, and it reminded us, Penn State fans, of all the things we saw at Penn State for years. That dude is electric. You can put him in open space, and he's making everybody miss. He's just got to find the hole to do so. And I think with this Philadelphia offensive line, he's able to be put in situations where his talents can then flourish, unlike what happened to him in New York. He instantly has become a really good pass catcher out of the backfield. He's not stretching out for Daniel Jones' errant passes anymore. Jalen Hurts is swinging him the ball. There's just way, way too many weapons on this Philadelphia team for this Atlanta defense, although... I got to give Atlanta some credit. Their, their defense you know, is is good on paper. I just don't think they're good enough to beat the Philadelphia Eagles. I think the X factor for this game has to be Saquon Barkley. Let's see if the kid can keep it up here in week two. Philly wins in this matchup on Monday Night Football. Well, that's it. Those are my picks. And this is my recap against uh, the New England Patriots. We're going to hold our breath and hope that Seattle is going to start this one 2-0 and oh, and who knows what's going to happen and maybe the west will be blown wide open this week cannot wait to talk to you soon enjoy thursday night football and until we meet again my name is zach and keep talking hawks i'll talk to you again real soon